John Lynch went on Sirius SM, Sirius yeah. XM radio today, gave an update about Brock Purdy. And I thought it was interesting in the sense that it's a typical John Lynch update. It's like, it's positive. It's good. He's ahead of schedule. He's good. I saw him throwing. And then in a very upbeat tone toward the end, he's like, yeah, also, like, we're not going to play him unless he's 100% ready. And that means, like, a lot of practice. It's like, yeah. oh, well, that's the news then. So what did you think? Yeah, I, I think it, it was good to hear because that's what Kyle Shanahan said last week. He talked yeah. about how they were optimistic that Brock Purdy would be, be back ready week one. Yeah. But he said at the same time, being ready week one doesn't mean just being there for week one. You have to put in a few weeks of practice. Now, they are optimistic that he will get that time in, but it is nice because one of the things that, that we've all said is – they have to do right by Brock Purdy. Hopefully they're not forcing him. They're not rushing him. They're not trying to get him out there for week one, no matter what. Their stance right now, at least to the media, is, hey, we would love to have him week one, but we need him to show that he's fully ready to go week one before we just throw him out there. Yeah. And I love that because if he is, in fact, the future of this team, then protect him like that. And so I do mm -hmm. like to hear that, but... Then there was also the part that came out where he's like, oh, yeah, and there's still a competition for the whoever's going to start. Let's we'll throw that in there and, and get out of the interview. I thought that was interesting that that is still a topic. So even if Brock Purdy's healthy, he's saying there's a competition for quarterback one. What are your thoughts on that? I have a theory, and I think it's a good one. I think it's a nice little conspiracy theory. I think I'm right about this. Okay. They are acting like everything's great and they're on the same page. Niners and Brock. I don't think they're on the same page. I think everyone's saying the right things, but I think the Niners understand that Brock has a very strong team behind him. His dad was a professional athlete and they can be, uh, if they have doctors on their side saying you're not quite ready, he doesn't have to play. He has leverage here. And if the Niners want him to rush back, he doesn't have to. So what they can say is, hey, we don't want you to rush back. In fact, if you're not ready, we're going to go with someone else. And it's almost like, hey, well, if you want to play this year, you better get your butt back on the field now. Uh, otherwise, we're going to go with someone else, which I would say, Brock, don't worry about it. Because right now you got the, the Niners have like both their quarterbacks in the therapy office right now. Like you're probably OK. So be, you know, be relaxed, do what's best for you. Because ultimately, if you do what's best for you, you're doing what's best for the 49ers, even if they don't know it, because they're so short-sighted and desperate. So you think that this play of, hey, there's a competition, they keep throwing that out there, I think they're talking their to Brock. way of trying to rush Brock back? I think that, they're talking to Brock. Okay. Hey, man, nothing's guaranteed. If you want this job, we love you, but you got to be back week one. And that might mean, you know, pushing yourself a little bit. He doesn't have to do that. He could say, you know what? No, I'm going to follow the doctor's uh, advice. You guys have such an awful track record of rushing people back. I got my own doctors. So I, that's why I got a second opinion. I'm going to go by their timetable. And you know what? If you want to go with check down one, check down two, Tweedle D, tweet, whatever, man, like, good. Go ahead. Because I know my tape kicks ass. I know my numbers kick butt. And if you don't want me anymore, pff, someone else will. And it doesn't mean that he's an elite quarterback, but it does mean that he's got some leverage because Sam doesn't have that. Trey doesn't have that, and I like them both. I really want Trey to succeed, but Brock has achieved something in this league, and he doesn't need to be treated like a freaking pledge. That's all, I'm, and I think he knows it. I have a little bit of a different theory on this one. So when <laughs> when they had the first press conference at the end of the season, John Lynch, Kyle Shanahan, both were like, "Oh yeah, nope, we're we're talking six month recovery. It's going to put them right and ready for training camp." There are no issues. We're good to go here. Then, He's like, second opinion, second opinion. <laughs> exactly. Then word comes out and mm -hmm. is like, well, hold on. There's still swelling. We're going to have to push this a few weeks. Yeah. Still a six-month recovery. Might not be ready. Uh -huh. And so I think they're looking at that going, okay, well, we've already been wrong once about this thing. We cannot in any circumstance come out and be wrong about this again. And... They've been pretty, I think they've been pretty honest about the situation. Like, yes, of course, Brock Purdy's the leader. But let's be real for a second. They don't know for sure what he is. And so, yeah, 
we need to see you come in in training camp and show that you're still that same guy. If you don't play well in training camp and somebody else is killing it, yeah, there is a, a small chance that somebody else could take that starting job if we don't trust you. If you aren't showing any of those intangibles that you showed us last year when you were healthy, dude, I, I don't know. I mean, have we really seen enough to just fully trust that you're going to be fine once the, the live bullets start going and you're in a game? I don't know about that. Yeah, I, I just still feel like their plan is to hope that Brock comes back. That's I their agree. plan. I agree. Because the, the way Not they're calling plays... Back, though, Grant comes back yeah. and is playing like Brock Purdy. Like, here's something you may not know, but Chris Forrester said it today. They're not installing quarterback-driven runs. Maybe they will at some point, but they're not now. And, it, and, and you have both quarterbacks throwing checkdowns left and right. So to me, what they're saying is, Brock's our quarterback. And you guys can do this little backup quarterback competition, but Brock's coming back, so you might as well run Brock's offense because that's the offense we're running this year. Like, yeah, maybe. Maybe. We'll see. But again, you're the organization that is way overly optimistic on every player's return timetable. That pushes them back too fast. That causes setbacks. I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo had to have a second sur a surgery. Trey Lance had to have a second surgery. Like, that's who you guys are. The only guy who didn't have that setback was the guy who rehabbed in fleek freaking Florida. Not to get too loud here, but yeah, like, that's who you guys are. Yeah, they are wrong. I mean... D Ford's still week to week at this point. <laughs> Jalen Hurd is too. So I don't They're know. They're wrong on their timelines a lot. That's for sure. Yeah. There's no doubt about that, Grant. I don't know. It just seems to me like coming back to Trey, like I understand you want Brock, but you you have to be prepared for a world where Brock doesn't play. I think he's prepared for it. So what is your plan B? Have a quarterback competition where both guys uh have no confidence. Like pick a guy pump his confidence up, and have him prepared. Because there's a real possibility, Vish and I talked about this last week, that where this, comp this competition yields no winner, no one differentiates himself, one guy has a good day, the other guy has a good day, both, guy get, both guys get half the reps, and whoever you start week one if it's not Brock, really, really struggles. And then it's like, well, your whole hope that Brock comes back and plays great thing was not a plan, and now what are you going to do? Like, use the, well, Brock was hurt, that's our excuse. Dude, you knew that. Like, you had all off-season to plan a plan B, and you didn't do it. Or it sucked, your plan B. Mm. I, and, like, look, if Trey's on the team, you should not, he shouldn't be competing, dude. I'm going to say, like, if Trey's on the team, I agree. you should be putting all of your coaching behind him. Yep. If you don't want to do that anymore because you think he's trash, he shouldn't be on the team. It doesn't make sense to put him on the same playing field as Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold is a guy who is no one else wanted. He's washed out of two teams. He's a retread. He's not a project. He's, he, you know what I'm, you know I'm saying? Like, Trey shouldn't be here yeah, or he should be I'm starting. Grant, it's yes. one of two. Yeah. Let him I, go. I'm and why won't they let him go? Because they're afraid. They're very afraid. They're afraid. I'm 100% with you on that. Every time that you take a first team rep away from Stupid. Trey Lance, it's stupid. You are you're stunting his growth. You're yes. stunting his growth. Still stupid. to this point. It's yeah. He's the only one that is on the field and healthy right now. So pour everything you have into him and hope that he Brock is come back who you thought he was. Yeah, Brock will come back eventually. In the meantime, put your last effort into Trey. Don't split it with Sam Darnold like, oh we dude, Sam Darnold is not the one. If anyone tells you Sam Darnold's looking great at OTAs, don't believe him, man. He looks like Sam Darnold, a guy with no confidence. The problem is that Trey honestly looks like he has this much more confidence than Sam, man, and it's sad. Like, like Sam Darnold, he talks, he projects no confidence. Trey, to me, projects a guy who's defensive and trying to fake confidence. Honestly, he looks like a guy who's trying to fake it. And I, I don't, I don't knock him, man. He's been through, he's been through the ringer. How, how do you? How do you have any genuine confidence left after what Kyle Shanahan has done to you and what's happened to you in the NFL? It's hard. I'd love to see where Brock's confidence is at when he actually gets back on the field. Mm. Mm. I Knees. mean, there there is. I mean, th this is the human element of things. Yeah. And it's not talked about enough. And nope. it really is a, a big thing. You know, I, I was reading about quarterbacks who have gone through therapy. And Tom Brady was one of them. and he said the reason that he went through therapy was to get over the lack of confidence he had coming out of college <laughs> where he wasn't getting the playing time that he felt like he deserved or had earned. And 
was he really as good as what he thought? And so he was going to therapy to overcome those demons. So if it can happen to Tom Brady, I know it was early, but if it can happen to Tom Brady, I mean, it could happen to anybody at this point. And you mentioned the human element. Like a lot of people that talk about Kyle being great, like the next Bill Belichick, they never talk about the human element. They'll yeah. talk about his plays, how open he gets people, his coaching staff. And again, that's all valid. But the difference between a great head coach and Kyle Shanahan is the human element. And you can see his la fundamental lack of understanding of human dynamics and the fact that he was, you know, a rich kid who could throw a fit and just that whole dynamic, it hurts him at quarterback. It hurts him at quarterback. The only time it worked out was with Matt Ryan. If you remember, that first year was not great. And according to Matt, Matt Ryan had to seek out Kyle after the season, yep. have a sit down, and let's yep. say, hey, let's work it out. Kyle wasn't going to do it. So the player was more grown up than the coach. And that's the only time it ever worked. So yep. I don't know. That's, that's know, exactly man. what happened is Matt Ryan yeah. did reach out to him. They had a beer. They hashed it out. And if it wasn't for Matt, it never would have worked. If you're an offensive head coach, your relationship with the quarterback has to be it's a everything. little bit different. Has to be different. His dad had a great relationship with John Elway. His dad was friends with John Elway. Their, their wives would, would, they would all, as couples, they, they would uh, vacation together. I don't think Mike Shanahan had a contentious relationship with freaking Steve Young. Where did this come from? It's not helpful. It's not helpful. I mean, you don't have to kiss their butt, but you don't have to tell them they're trash all the time. They'll believe you. Yeah, but then... Especially if they're they, 23. When it came down to his choices, Mike Shanahan, when it came down to his choices at quarterback, once the Hall of Famers weren't there, he did have contentious relationships. Jake Plummer sure. talks about it. Jake Plummer was not a bad player. If you, no. if you watch Jake Plummer during those times, you can go back and look at his numbers and be like, oh, he was guard. When you actually no. watched him play, there was something there with Jake Plummer. And, but Walsh Jake Plummer him. had zero confidence playing for Mike Shanahan, and yeah. he talks about it. Yeah. You have to be as confident as Steve Young or John Elway to stand up to the Mike Shanahan. And like, so essentially, like if you have a Hall of Fame quarterback in his prime, the Shanahan's are great for him. Like, but who, you could say that about any quarter. You could, I mean, maybe not anyone. Like, okay, okay. If you had a Hall of Fame quarterback in his prime, I'd rather have Kyle Shanahan than Mike McCarthy. Okay, okay, that's fair. Mike McCarthy stinks. Kyle's better than him. But still, like, a lot of coaches would look good with a Hall of Fame quarterback in his prime. And if that's what Kyle needs to succeed, then, dude, like, you're an offensive coordinator. Uh, let me know when a team has a, a Hall of Fame quarterback in his prime. Then, then I'll hire you. Otherwise, you're just going to crush every quarterback we bring in the organization, man. Everyone. They should have got Aaron Rodgers, man. But that they can't coexist. It's in, it's interesting because, no, their personalities they would can't not coexist. have coexisted. Kirk all. Cousins would have been perfect. But here's the thing. Would Kirk Cousins, on a guaranteed contract, making $40 million a year, really let Kyle talk to him like that? He let him talk to him like that 10 years ago in another, in another lifetime. Would he still let him talk to him like that? Jimmy didn't let him. Jimmy wouldn't even answer his calls. Jimmy wouldn't even text him back. I'm just saying. I don't know that this veteran quarterback, like he wants, he needs Rich Gannon, man. Rich Gannon was that salty vet who would take all the negativity from the coach and keep coming and keep coming. Dude, let me know when you find that guy. Yeah, there's, that's what a, you need. there's a specific personality that works that's what you need. with Kyle. Rich and, but that's that's really hard. The, the backup. You're... The backup. The backup that you can't crush that has their own drive. That's not supposed to be in the league, right? That guy. Dude, the, the guy who's been told that he's great his whole life, and you, you're the first guy that comes along to, hey, I'm Kyle Shane, and I think you suck. Well, damn. That's all. Now I'm screwed. I, they never did that to Joe Burrow. At what point? How does that help a young quarterback? Hey, Joe. You think you're good? Let me let me just tell you, you suck. Go get him. Go get him, buddy. Like, thanks, coach. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'll, I will internalize that. He needs a quarterback that has established confidence before mm -hmm. he comes into the picture because mm -hmm. establishing confidence while he's in the picture is almost impossible. No, that's what Mike McDaniel does. So, okay, who's that? Is that Dak Prescott? No, that guy has his own confidence issues. No. Who has enough confidence to stand up to Kyle Shanahan? Okay. Quarterbacks he doesn't want. Tom Brady. Aaron Rodgers. Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson. Yeah. Jeez. So you're in a you're in a you're in a cash twenty two here, man. I'm sorry. I'm I've been out on Kyle Shanahan for a long time. And I think eventually 
it's fair to be like, dude, year eight, no quarterback. Year nine, no quarterback. What's the plan, man? Because this team is money, and, and they lost Jimmy Ward. Eventually, next year, it's going to be someone else. They're going to lose this team, and they're going to miss it. It's going to be a damn shame. It's not funny. I don't even root for this team, and I'm like getting sentimental about it. Like they're going to lose, they're going to miss it because of Kyle and his freaking, I don't know what you want to call it. It's not even indecisiveness at quarterback. It's worse than that. Yeah, Trent Williams is close to, to being yep. gone. Use check's probably gone after this year. Uh-huh. Gibson's gone after this year. Yep. Jennings is likely gone after this year. Yikes. Is Armstead or Kittle a cap casualty? Like it's it's coming pretty quick. It's coming, this man. This window's closing. They got it two is. years on this thing, right? They now. do because it because they're gonna extend Bosa this year. He'll be affordable the next two years. In 2025, he's gonna make so much money. He's gonna make more money than a lot of quarterbacks. And at that point, like, pff, I don't know about this roster anymore. You better have a quarterback in place by 2025. Otherwise, you're going to be losing a lot of players because you're going to be paying your defensive end like he's a quarterback. So he's who cares about that build cheap quarterback room? Good team outside the quarterback position. It's great. That's so, oh, it's great. Kind of like, like what they did in Tampa with Tony Dungy. I mean, that team was money, but he just wasn't the right guy to get it across the finish line. Like, mm-hmm. honestly, you could say that Tony Dungy was a better head coach than John Gruden. Oh, yeah. But Gruden was the guy who got it done. I don't think Dungy would have gotten it done there. Dungy needed to go to Indianapolis. And then I don't know that Gruden would have coexisted with Peyton the way that no. Dungy did. You know what I'm saying? No. But, no. So, I agree that's what's that. tough about. 